Do you have issues with black soot coming from your hackberry trees in the fall? Now that it's spring, we've got the time to treat these trees. I'm here with Joshua. He is a professional who does this. So first off, we would want to make sure that people have got a hackberry, if that's what that's they correct. think. Is, is doing that. So one of the easiest ways to identify a hackberry is to look at the bark. Uh -huh. You'll notice kind of this warty formation that forms on the outside of the bark. Uh -huh. um, that's one of the easiest ways to identify this tree as a hackberry. The other way is to look at the way that the leaves are arranged. Hackberries are unique in the way that their leaves are arranged alternatively meaning that they don't come off the branch side by side. Uh -huh. It's a leaf here and then up on the opposite side. Yeah. Furthermore, with that leaf, the base of that leaf is, is different in itself as where most leaves, when they come back to the point, they all come back together and meet, whereas a hackberry leaf is actually a little offset. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the very few trees that does that, so it's a very clear indication that you have a hackberry tree. Yeah, and they're also probably one of the most common trees we've got in they are. this area um, too, right? They're extremely abundant in the southeast. Here in Tennessee especially, it's one of the most popular trees that you see around. Yeah. Um, they're kind of like a volunteer tree. They like to grow in an abundance of places, right. whether if they have shallow soil or, or rocky soil or things like that, they can, they can pretty much grow anywhere. And they also have those, another identifying factor is the berries. The little berries, that's correct. You'll see birds paying a lot of attention to these trees for those little berries. As a designer in my background, I also hear and see a lot of people call them trash trees, which kind of hurts me because I think they're great. This, they have the one downside as far as the, the black soot, but they're really strong. These aren't really the trees you see that fall in the winter because they're just so stout. They're, they just have that one big issue. So taking it out, I mean, I guess is an option, but you know, we sure. prefer treating them right. Sure, as with any other species of trees, there's likely always an alternative to removal. With this problem, it's a very simple, effective treatment that you can do as a homeowner, or you can have a company like us do it as well. Right. Um, I don't like hearing that trees are trash, because right. to me, no trees are trash, especially sure. in suburban and urban areas like this. Trees are extremely valuable. Right. Even if it's a species that's not as popular or not as nice as some of the other species, it's still going to help you uh, save money in your house with air conditioning and heating. It's going to raise right. the value of your property. Yep. Um, so just because it's not the most desirable tree, it certainly doesn't mean that it's a trash tree. Right. And they're also native too. They people, are native. People try to tote that line because they're so aggressive, but they're still native trees, which is why they do so well. They're drought exactly. tolerant. You know, they're slow growing. So you get that hard wood that makes them strong. So they are, there's, I would say that the benefits out, outweigh the negatives. Absolutely. Good. It's, it's always nice to meet somebody who's a hackberry lover too. Absolutely. <laughs> so as far as treatment goes, when is the time to do that? Getting into April, now is the time to do it. Unfortunately, people aren't always aware of the treatment windows for things like this because it's more of a preventative or proactive treatment that you're doing ahead of whenever the mess is happening. As we get into June, July, and August, that's really when everyone is going to see the bulk of the black sooty mold coming down the honeydew from the, from the aphids. But right now in, in late spring, early summer, that's really the best time to treat your trees. It gives enough time for the treatment to get up through the tree to the part where the aphids are actually infesting themselves. Pretty much the only treatment is a systemic in the spring. It is. And I'm glad you brought up the fact that it's a systemic. That is a newer class of chemistry in the pesticide world. So if you're, if you're gonna pick a product that is a systemic, I would certainly recommend to always read the label first, especially with bees and pollinators. It's, it's a very sensitive subject. It's something that you really have to know what you're doing when you do that. With hackberries, fortunately, the flowers are very small. They're also wind pollinated. Right. So using a systemic product to treat a hackberry tree isn't going to interfere with any butterflies or bees or pollinators like that. And let's talk about the pests themselves that's actually causing the problems. That's aphids, right? A hackberry woolly aphid. They're a little hard to identify because they're so small. Most of the time they are a of an inch or smaller. You will find them accumulating on the underside of the leaf. They're, since they are small, they're very susceptible to predators and things like that. So normally you're not gonna see them in places that are visible unless you're standing under the tree looking up. Right. And then when you do see them, they kind of have a fuzzy appearance. They have a bluish whitish color to them. Um, and then you can always usually tell it's them because they're a little waxy everywhere that they've been's a little waxy from that honeydew that they're excrementing. So it's really not that difficult of a thing to stop that massive mess that you get in the, in the summer. It's not. With the right chemical and the right treatment timing, we see anywhere from upwards of 70 80 percent cutback of the black sooty mode. Whether if you get it right in the treatment window or a little after, it's still going to yield a lot of results and be beneficial for you. So it looks like we've actually got some black soot from last year still on this tree. 
We do. That's part of the nuisance that homeowners find. If you're not cleaning it off, it kind of just builds on top of each other. And as you can see here, this is years and years of that building up from falling down from the canopy of this tree itself onto this trunk and really giving that really deep black appearance. So rainwater and, and or hose water is really not gonna wash that it's off? It's not. Most of the time you have to pressure wash things, really get in there with some good water pressure to get it off. It usually doesn't take any type of soap or chemical like that to get it off, just water pressure itself will okay. help clean it up. I know there's a lot of other things as far as decks and patio furniture that have got it on there. Let's take a look at that. Sure. So here's a cushion that's clearly covered in some of this black mold. This is years and years of this buildup, Philip. And if you flip this over and take a look, you can see just how much of a difference that these hackberry trees can make on lawn yeah. furniture. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's a side by side. And that's probably not going to wash off very easily. It's too. probably not on fabric. Um, the bench itself, along with the fire pit and those sort of things, you could get that clean again with a pressure washer. Uh -huh. Something that's fabric, it's probably time to toss it and start over with new. So as far as some professional treatments, why don't you show me kind of what y'all do? Sure. What he's doing is he's using a probe that he's injecting down into the ground. We use a probe because along with fertilizer and other treatments that we do, it gets it below the root level of the grass and flowers and things like that. Right. And it puts it at a depth in the soil profile where only the trees can attain that stuff. So what he's done here, he's already got his probe and his, his gun set up and calibrated for the treatment he's doing. Uh -huh. He is looking at these trees and gauging the size of the diameter. And then that is, that is affecting how much treatment he's putting in the ground. Now, normally, what he would be doing is going right around the trunk of the tree, as close to it as he could get. Uh -huh. This is a little different setup that we have to do from time to time because there is a, a stream here. Right. So we want to bring that stuff farther away from that creek bank to keep it from leaching down into that water. Davey is a large company and we have a very large safety department that uh -huh. has rigorous, rigorous testing for all of the chemicals and products that we use. Yeah. So anything that you see us use or we, we come out and talk with you, you can have that peace of mind that knowing that those chemicals have been tested for years, they're uh -huh. safe for children and pets. So we don't use anything that's harmful to our employees or our clients or the earth itself. I can tell by the, the soil injection, you're getting a lot less product on the surface or on the ground level, which, exactly. which is gonna cut down on interaction with these chemicals, which is a really good thing too. So if you're a homeowner that has one or two problem hackberries, is there any treatment that they could do themselves? There are. There's a lot of treatments that are available at your local Home Depot or Walmart, Lowe's, things like that. You want to make sure and read the label. First off, to make sure it's going to treat this pest itself. Sure. Um, and then second, just to quickly educate yourself as far as the treatment times, the dosage, and things like that. Right. Some of the more popular ones are made by Bayer or Bonide. Pretty much any type of insecticide that you find that is a systemic, make sure that it's a tree and shrub insecticide and it's probably going to be okay. With any chemical, whether if you're a homeowner or you're a professional company like us, the label is the law, so make sure that you read the label. As far as treatment timing and uh, the doses that you use, you want to make sure that you're not harming the tree itself, you're not right. harming any other insects or pollinators or things like that, right. and you're not over applying because sometimes over applying can be just as detrimental to the tree as under applying. Sure. Well, thank you so much, Joshua. I appreciate everything that you've taught us today. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.